with you. It's it's at the top of my list too. And we get multiplayer next week. Yeah, man. And be sweet a, too. a lot of uh, a lot of quality of life improvements in the main game too, like um, loadouts yeah, yeah. for armor and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, just talking about Ghost, James. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Give me a sec. Um, let me let me get in here. I'm good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, no. We're just chewing the fat, in or not? Yeah. Chewing the fat. Okay. Nothing serious. How do I sound? How do I sound? Real good. Good. Yeah. Real, Real good. good. Fuck yeah. yes. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. What a fucking what a fucking week it's been, boys. Indeed, it has. Oh. God. What uh, has been going on? Hmm. Well, well, James went from never having played Star Wars Squadrons to knowing it inside out and having reviewed it in the span of like 36 hours. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bananas. Yeah. Got the code on the 28th, and then the live event for multiplayer was on the 30th, and then huh. the review was up from the next day. <laughs> nice. Yep. Oh, Jesus Christ. What a tie. <laughs> I think, like, everybody has to have one of those at some point in their career. You got to get to that to that stage where the crunch is real. Yeah. Yeah, that you was know? Crash. That was Crash this week, too. I got it uh, three days. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, that was tight. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about that one. It's good. Yeah. I hope that you'll purchase it one day when it goes on sale, Paul. I think you'll like it more than you did the demo. I mean, you're, yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah. But you're saying it's good, but I know for a fact that uh, Activision has plastered all over their accolades trailers, platforming perfection. Ooh, really? Yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. That's a sexy uh, quote. From, from one Rhett Wasselinchuk from COG Connected. Close enough. Um... Yeah. Did I get it wrong again? Uh, well, kind of. Wassel and Chuck. Wassel and Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I got, um, I got the wrong emphasis. But I mean, like, it's a, it's a very difficult name. It's it's a uh, very uncommon. Now, uh, I mean, should we just get into the show? Yeah. I mean, we're already going. I don't I don't even need to do an introduction. Let's okay. just okay, let's beautiful. just talk about video games, guys. Love it. Um, you know? Yeah. We don't need to be fake here. We don't have to have a fake introduction and. All that Y'all know who jazz. it is. You know, everybody yeah. knows who we are at this point. I'm Paul, oh, you're Rhett, and there's James. That's it. Beautiful. That's right. Okay, um, right. The, the three of us, the 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 the, the, the cog pod boys riding again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> three three one MCs does. and and one DJ. Yeah. Called Craig the Craig bot. Uh, yeah, Craig the, the Discord bot. He's got fat beats. Craig, how you doing, brother? Yeah. I wish it actually recorded him saying, now recording. Oh, that'd be so good. (laughs) Just remix that into a a sick bass line. Mm. Anyhow, video games. Yeah. I've been playing them. You guys been playing them? Fuck yes. Yeah, yeah. God, there's some really, really good video games this year. Yeah, like... Like, This is one of the best years on memory. Truly. For, for all the shit that's been going on outside of the gaming world, uh, oh. us gamers have been able to just kind of sit back and uh, revel in how great it's been all year long. Um, since, Marvelous time to be inside. Since February, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Uh, Final Fantasy launched in February, was it? Oh, uh, April. April, okay. Well, I feel like since then. I, I, Doom came out a little bit before then. Yeah, uh, Doom yeah, was in February. Yeah, like, it really started with with Doom and Animal Crossing coming yeah. out on the same day. That was the yeah. signal. It's like, all right, guys, it's gonna be a wild one, for yeah. sure. Um, and well, yeah, it's, what, it's, what have you guys been playing? You been, you been playing some good stuff. I'm playing a little mishmash of things myself. Crash Four mostly. Uh, which I took a a giant steamer on. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago because the demo was hot garbage. Yeah, so I'm curious, what levels do they give you in the demo? There was an ice level. Okay. With some 
uh, some kind of time freezing mechanic. Which, the ice levels are never great to throw at somebody in a demo because you're sliding all over the place. They tend to be the most difficult in these types of platforming games. I don't think an ice level is good to have in a... Was it three levels you got in the demo? Three levels. There was an ice level. There was a kind of dinosaur escape level. That mm-hmm. that one was pretty good. That one was all right. I think that's probably the first level, if I'm not mistaken. The dinos? Yeah, I think that that's the first level. Yeah, that, that felt like a, a good introduction. It was, it was fun, but then the third level was some uh, Dr. Neocortex bullshit. Right, where you're playing as Cortex. Uh, yeah, right. and I don't know. Yeah, it's different. There, there was it's no explainers. Right? There was no, here's what you need to be doing. Here's how you be Cortex. Oh, just kind of, okay. you know, just just get out there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why they they didn't bother putting a, a tutorial or yeah, you know, button definite, mapping. Yeah, because definitely, there are five characters that you can play as. And hmm. certainly, like, when you come across each new character, you get a little tutorial. The first level that you play as with the new character, you're given, like, you know, the initial 5% of the level or whatever is basically just, like, a, a, a training ground or whatever, you know? Just a little area yeah. that you can test your, your stuff out on, break some crates, knock an enemy or two out. Um, so, yeah, it's weird that they didn't tell you what to do with Cortex in the demo. Um, but, like, if you're a Crash yeah. fan man i i said it in the review and i really think it uh you're not going to get better than this game uh out of i don't know how many games they've released in this series now 10 or something like that um yeah a lot of people saying it's the best crash game absolutely uh it really like sort of encompasses everything that they've been doing over the years over the past 24 years and, uh, and and like you were saying last time, there are a lot of new mechanics, but it still feels like Crash through and through, you know, mm. um, all throughout, even when you're playing as like Dingadile or Cortex, it still feels like you're playing Crash. Uh, and I really appreciated that, but it felt super, it also feels super modern and, you know, uh, as it should in 2020. And then the other thing is the replayability in that game is unlike any th- well, no, I shouldn't say anything but the the replayability is insane. Uh each level mm-hmm. can be played multiple times. There are different pathways that open up depending on which character you're using. Um so like I when you unlock Dingadile for example, levels on the first world will have new pathways open up that you can go back with Dingle, Dingadile and play them. And then you'll like run into crash as you're playing the same level with Dingadile. So it's, I don't know. It's just this cool concept that they have going on mm. where um, they're able to stretch. Not that there is like, not that there's a little and they're stretching it a long ways. There's a lot there to be molded and shaped. And um, yeah, there's just tons to do. Like it's overwhelming. It's, it's overwhelming to uh, to try and go for a hundred percent in this game. Easily like a hundred and I mean, obviously it depends on skill, but I would say like easily a hundred and fifty hours to. to wow, try to, 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 well, that, that seems that seems like a lot for a crash game. Maybe Am I crazy one fifty, <laughs> but maybe a hundred. Honestly, maybe a hundred. Like each, it, it's crazy how much there is. Wow. Well, so, I will happily eat crow on that one. I'm glad yeah. that it turned out uh, to be not just a good game, but an outstanding game. Yeah. Um, curious where you stand on the uh, Crash's Girlfriend redesign, Rhett. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, she, like, she introduces... Cra- like, she's not technically... And I mean, I don't want to get... I mean, it's fucking spoilers. It's fucking Crash. Yeah. I think technically <laughs> this Tana isn't Crash's girlfriend. She's, like, from another timeline. Oh, all right. Yeah, so so she's you know, she's whatever. She it's pretty fun to play as her. She's got the uh, like the grappling hook, and she does the like karate kicks and stuff. Uh, Tom is pretty fun to play as actually. So she's like that character if she decided to take a different major in college and like did some different cool shit with her life. <laughs> totally, totally. Okay. Uh, but she's the character that like on her way to college, she gets fucking you know, taken in by some secret service agents or something like that. And fucking she becomes a superhero and yeah. (laughs) 
which I'm fine with. Yeah, no, she's honestly. cool. Honestly, she, she's cool. I, I I dig the redesign. I really do. It fits in with the theme of the game, and uh, she's that's what I really appreciated is all the characters feel very different. You know, it's not like you're playing as five different crashes. Although I will say I I don't agree with their decision to make um make it canon that crashes shorts are not jorts. Mm. They are basketball shorts. Right. What were they Oh no, they were. They were uh, I mean cl- jorts, they're clearly they? jeans, right? Yeah, no, they were. They always have been. Well, no. They aren't. Yeah, but like they're basketball okay, shorts. What? Look at it this way. Come Fucking cow. Honestly? Basketball shorts are a way, way better move. Yeah, I know. Clothing wise, Fucking... like if you're gonna be running around, jumping, doing all that shit, don't do it in shorts. Okay. Come on, man. I think they're fucking cowards, and they didn't stay true to Crash's roots. And they just because jorts aren't cool in 2020 doesn't mean that there aren't there isn't 24 years of history. And... Rhett, 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 you're missing the point. And I'm not saying that jorts aren't cool, although I am. What I'm saying is that jorts are not something you want to exert yourself physically in because they will how to put this delicately they will grab and clamp upon your testes and <laughs> twist them like the tie atop a bag of chips all right you Bro, will have you, you will, seen, you will you will execute you? one flying leap and then and then man you will see crash on the ground in fucking agony writhing and rolling back and forth because his pants have betrayed him as they would immediately have you seen john cena he- That's a really good point. Oh. Also, to go with the lore, no, I have not seen John Cena. Nobody has seen John Cena, you fucking liar. <laughs> Fuck. I guess I walked into that one. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Damn it. Jorts. Yeah, fuck. Jorts. Okay. Now, the nice thing, though, uh, is that he, he doesn't need to be in basketball shorts. He doesn't need to be in jorts because there is a deep list of uh, different skins that you can... Uh, put on crash i just unlocked the mardi gras crash and that one's pretty nice actually Ooh, yeah. mardi gras what does he wear as a mardi gras crash he's got like the fun like feather boa kind of thing going on he's got the mask he's got like this bright colored it's almost kind of like a jumpsuit i guess it's it looks cool it looks cool and then he's got like you know classic biker crash and fucking pirate crash with the wooden leg and uh okay sweet yeah, yeah there's a lot of good that. Show. yeah Ah, yeah. Classic biker crash. The biker crash from uh, Warped. Yeah, man. Yep. Nice. All right. Yeah. Sick. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and F- Paul and I were talking about it. You know that this is the kind of game that come Black Friday, it's going to be $20 off, $30 off. So if you're interested in Crash, you know, now's the time or, or it will be the time soon to get it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, James, what have you been up to? I know you, you had some similarly tight timelines this past week yes i uh dove head first into star wars squadrons oh um i have i I even have new information since i published my review uh anecdotally acquired from a friend of mine but i think it's very relevant so basically it's like the you know, you'd be playing an old Star Wars game and you thought to yourself, well, if, what if the whole thing was just flying around in ships and shooting other ships? Wouldn't that be rad? Well, the guys who made this mode have thought the same thing, and so that's what they did. <clears throat> and I mean, like, there, there, there's, you're, there's like a total of like 11 minutes of gameplay time in the single-player campaign where you're out of the cockpit and you don't move. You're just standing there watching people talk at you. It's actually really unsettling. But, um... <laughs> You're all the time. You're just kind of flying around in the ship and shooting people, and those people are shooting you. And the controls are set up in such a fashion where, according to the devs, it's like it's supposed to feel like you're in the ship, like you're controlling a ship, not just a little point on the screen that you just sort of move around. You know what I mean? Like, like you got two sets of like the thruster and the steering that you're like moving, you're fucking around with, and the weapons you have to like deal with, and like acceleration works in this funny way where like if you slam on the brakes you continue going forward for a while because it turns out there's not a whole lot of resistance in space. Um. <laughs> well, since when has that stopped any ship in Star Wars from flying like a plane, 
basically. Oh yeah, like if they were actually doing this, you'd ha- you'd be firing off like jets from the front of you to to slow down because like there's no there's literally no other way. But it's cool yeah. how like you'll like mash the brakes and it'll take you a little bit of time depending on how fast you're going and the size of the ship too that makes a difference. Um and uh it's got a lot of different controller options, a lot of different uh uh like you can do VR if you want. Apparently that is the absolute bomb dickity when you can get it to work, which isn't too hard. However, this is the new thing I learned. The PC version of Star Wars Squadrons has a list that they publish where it's like, these are the flight sticks you want to use if you're going to play the game. It's mm-hmm. really important that you have a flight stick like that or equivalent because they auto map button commands to different buttons on the joystick. And if the joystick doesn't have those buttons, you will soft lock yourself into oblivion. Because you can't even like hit the menu to like exit out of the fucking game oh, because fuck. it's mapped to a button that doesn't exist on the flight stick. God so you know, damn it. be aware of this before you plug one in. <laughs> How did QA miss this? Dude, this, this? They they didn't. They were very they were just very upfront about it. They're like, okay, this is the kind of fucking <laughs> yeah. Th- these are the kind of sticks we're gonna work with. There's a list, you know, it's not just one, and they just like really it just has to have enough button inputs. Well, how so long if you're is the using, list? uh, is it like Red, a, I didn't a pay handful? a lot of attention because I'm not using one, so I don't super care. Oh, fair, yeah. Because I'm I'm using a PS4 controller, mm. so I was like, I don't whatever. Who gives a shit? Yeah. But. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a list of a few, but I think the most important thing isn't that you have one on the list, it's that you have one with enough buttons. Right. right. Mm. It's kind of important. Because <laughs> mm. then it's like, press this, press eight to do the missiles, and you're like, there are five buttons eight, on this yeah. stick, <laughs> I am up the creek. <laughs> Shit. Well. Yeah, like you said, I, 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 I mean, I guess that's a thing, but like, is yeah. is is the game fun? Are you still enjoying it? Um, I took a break after the review embargo went live because I had another project I've been dipping in and out of that I can't still talk about yet, even though I will say this, the anticipation, the wait, not worth it. We'll get into it later, but (laughs) all, all you need to know is that I'm playing a game. It's not big and it's not good. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyways, I've, I've been messing around with that, and I, I, um, but I, 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 I logged in like, God, probably like twenty five, thirty hours <laughs> in the three days, and it is yeah. good. It's fun. It's hard. Those are the things you need to know. It's it's a difficult game, but in a fun way, and like. There's there's going to be some strategies that come up as like, oh, these are obviously what you want to do. Um, and the devs said out front that like, oh, it doesn't matter what kind of controller you use. I'm not like 100% sure about that because the like the range and precision of motion with the analog sticks is not the same as a mouse. It's not the same as a flight stick. It just isn't. Yeah. No, it's, it just yeah. isn't. Yeah, and crossplay is on by default, so you might end up against somebody with like a slightly more refined range of motion. Oof! But like, apparently the on their team, the guy who was the best out of everybody who was playtesting the game did so with a PS4 controller on a tiny screen. <laughs> so like, you it it can be an advantage, but you have to kind of know how to use those controllers really well. But I think it's more about like, are you good at flight sims? Like mm. that's that's it. Like that's the that's the big kicker. I'm not good at flight sims, and so for me it was like, when my team won, it was like, yay! Mm. <laughs> oh my god, I'm yeah, participating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when it's like me versus an opponent, holy fuck! <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask you that I didn't uh, the last time we talked about this, which you can you can find that video on on the old YouTube's. Um, a lot of the video I've seen of this game makes the cockpit and the field of view seem really, really claustrophobic. And nah. <laughs> I, I don't think I like that because part of the reason I want to play a game in space is that big, expansive, 
world and the you know just kind of gives you the sense of possibility it's it's a very definite design decision because you have a lot of sensory data coming at you every second it's it's like that it's like those boss fights in metal gear solid for the ps1 the camera angle is like a very important part of the difficulty Mm. and when you take that away you would like (laughs) <laughs> badly fuck it up to the point where it's like not any kind of challenge anymore i didn't personally find it particularly claustrophobic there are ships you can use that like let you free look a little more aggressively and just kind of like take it all in like the a-wing has like a bubble cockpit that you can just like look up and around especially if you're in vr you can just like it's gonna say, see yeah. behind you and shit yeah right but like my favorite ship, one of my favorite ships was the TIE Fighter, and that thing has a teeny tiny fucking field of view. To me, it just let me focus. So, yeah, I've, I've got, uh, let's call it a mild case of ADHD. <laughs> and so, <laughs> having the blinders on really helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You golden retrievers, you can't see the squirrel if you're looking out the window of a TIE Fighter. That's, that's right. That's exactly right. I get you. Um, That's it, it does very deliberately make certain em- elements of the combat more difficult, though. There was times when I'd be, like, in a dogfight, and I'd be kind of turning as fast as I could. Like, you have the the throttle up, you have the, the all the power to the engines, you're using a maneuverable fighter, you have, like, your gear settings to be more maneuverable, but, like, you're moving and they're moving, you just can't keep up. So what you have to do is, like, cut the engines... And then stop, and then you can turn so much faster, but you're also a sitting duck. <laughs> so you have to make decisions like that. Hmm. And, and like when you hear when you get the missile lock alarm, which when you're in multiplayer is all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, depending on like how many other players are around you. When you hear the missile lock, lock alarm, you really can't sleep on it. You have to like get moving and grooving like fucking immediately just like bank and and dip and dive and duck and like slam the boost and just like no get away from that fucking missile and then like do the like the boosty drift turn thing where you like go as fast as you can then like fucking cut the engines and like turn hard right you do like a 180 and like a second and a half and then you like turn around and like fill the other person's face full of lasers <laughs> fuck it should play that game again <laughs> james you're 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 selling me on this. It sounds, it sounds like a good time. Yeah, like that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, it's tough as fuck, but oh my god. Understand, guys, audience. I, James, am not as good at video games. Like I'm I'm sl- if if there's an average like statistical breakdown, I'm a little bit below the median. So when I say that something's really challenging, maybe take that with like a grain of salt, you know? Other reviewers and like the 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 what's its pickle the fucking uh, the press releases and stuff like that they're like this game is tough and I was like all right sure if you say so and then I played it and like yes this game is tough I think a lot of our listeners will find it shockingly approachable <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I mean the, I guess the other thing with this is though once the community really takes off and those expert pilots are truly experts, there's probably no way the scrubs are going to keep up, right? Well, it's skill-based matchup, so you're never going to, like, get thrown into this shit fully. Right? Yeah, like, they always say that. But, yeah, you know, yeah. You know. You know. Skill-based matchups until they can't find anybody in your fucking skill range, and then you're with the rank number three player in the world. See, yeah. it was, it's fun, though, so there you go. Okay. Uh, One game I've been playing that is really fun, like shockingly shockingly fun is Hades from Supergiant Games the people who made Bastion and Transistor some of those cool games uh Hades is James you're going to you're going to want to hang on to your chair for this one cuz you're going to want to go download it like right now oh, it's yeah. a roguelike uh heard, it's a roguelike yeah, <laughs> yeah I know um, I know I've you're been, excited I've been hearing a lot of like hot buzz from yeah. the net about this one like a lot of people are like this one's basically my game of the year and I'm like fuck really <laughs> yeah it is pretty fucking good uh it's been in early access for a long long time and I did play it way back when when it first came into early access and went 
well, yeah, this seems pretty good. And then didn't touch it because I just kind of wanted to wait for the main game the same way I kind of approached uh, Dead Cells. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and now it's in 1.0. And this game is really, really good. Just mechanically super duper good. It's a uh, isometric uh, sort of three-quarter view 3D action game. And it's basically Dead Cells. You are Prince Zagreus, uh, Prince of the Underworld, and you are trying to escape hell. And nice. to do that, you got to go through a bazillion different rooms. You run into all sorts of gods. The art is absolutely fantastic. And the some of the gods that you run into or you uh, get messages from are, are really charming. Look, the writing is, is top-notch. And mechanically, the game is just fun as fuck. It's the kind of game, even though it's pretty tough, if you just happen to kind of roll wrong with your, uh, you know, your boons at the beginning of your run and you get to room three and get squashed, it's still fun. I don't know how they've managed to, to balance that difficulty with the fun factor in such a pleasing way. Uh, so, you know, even if I've been having a really good run, get destroyed by a boss, I'm like, ah, I'll get them next time. That was fun. I'm going to try the bow next run. Mm. It's really, that, really good. That's really important where, like, in a, in a good roguelike, like, part of the reason I'm so salty on them is because I played so many that I found f- fucking intolerable. But, like, a really good one, like Rogue Legacy, for example, every run is a blast. You're like, oh, I died. Guess I got to play it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is the combat similar to Dead Cells? Like, does it have that sort of satisfying, like, crunch to it? You know, where every hit, every every shot, you kind of feel. Uh, like, what's that like? Oh, it's not quite as crunchy as as Dead Cells is, but it is really satisfying. Okay. Um, there's a lot of nuance to the movement and the dashing and the attacking. Um, you really yeah. got to pay attention to, to what kind of enemies you've got around you to decide when you've got to dash, when you've got to attack, when you've got to cast spells. Um, so I would say that the, the success factor is equally impressive as, as Dead Cells is, um, hmm. even if it's not quite as visceral. But uh, the, the big thing I've been noticing, I probably played maybe 10 hours of this thing, is just about every run you end up with different boons. So you you get blessed by the gods of Olympus. They want the prince of the underworld to end up on Olympus and, you know, hang out with them. So they want to help you. So you might get a, a boon from Zeus on one run. And on the one particular run, every time I dashed, lightning would strike nearby. Oh, okay. And then the next run, I got a different dash boon where the god of food and wine uh, made all the enemies near where you just dashed hung over and take damage over time. Nice. Yeah. So there's all kinds of super clever uh, power-ups and boosts um, nice. to go alongside <laughs> some really cool main weapon options that I, I don't want to spoil because they're they're pretty awesome. But yeah, it's phenomenal. And it's on the Switch as well. I'm playing it on PC, but it is on the Switch too. It would be an, an outstanding out-and-about game. Any word on if it runs as well on the Switch uh, compared to the PC? Because I know a lot of these Switch ports, when they launch... Like uh, I think Dead Cells was one of them, and fucking yeah, Dead Cells uh, was a little, a little ripe on the Switch. Bloodstained as um, well. I know when that launched, it was a nightmare. So yeah, any any word on that? I don't know, but I did watch the trailer, and the trailer looked sixty FPS to me. Oh, okay, nice. So uh, I would imagine it's probably pretty good. It's not that heavy of a game, but yeah. it is on the art side. It's really good. I thought nothing would touch. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima for style points this Ooh, year. Really? But but playing this, man, some of the character art and some of the uh, environmental design is is really impressive. Shit. Hmm. Okay, well I'll definitely right. check it out now. Yeah. Although I'm I'm still very much into Dead Cells. Oh yeah, me too. I still go back and, and go for a run every once in a while. I haven't beaten it yet. <laughs> I think I'm maybe fifty runs or so in and I still have not beaten it, so hopefully no, that's not surprising. Yeah. 
you just got to get that perfect roll where you've got the the uh a couple of sinew slicers yes. those babies really help out on the on the bosses yeah sinew slicers i found my combination has been freezing and then any type of like heavy melee weapon and then i'm like just boosting up the freezing ability and yeah yeah we'll see if you want to take a break and move in three dimensions i would definitely recommend hades um yeah. i thought i was gonna like it but the people who say this is in the game of the year discussion aren't messing around mechanically Ooh. it's super tight yeah that might have to go on my um short list even though you know even though it's a roguelike which i don't i got strong words about but you know if it sounds like it's put together well enough that that it ends up being a feature, not a bug, then fuck yeah, sign me up. Yeah, in a way it kind of scratches that, not in the same way, but it kind of scratches that same Diablo itch. Mm. You know, maybe that's just because it's got a similar perspective. Yeah, isometric can kind of trick your brain a little bit into thinking that you're getting something specific. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, the game does a great job of making you feel like you're getting more powerful. There are permanent upgrades and stuff that you're getting along the way. Um, but even over the course of a run, you go from barely able to stand on your own to basically a god in one particular area, basically every time. So um, it does a great job of balancing the difficulty with feeling like you, um, you're a god. Progressing, yeah. that, that feeling of progression is so crucial to those games, man. If you don't have that, if you're not feeling like you're getting a little bit closer to the end of the game after each run or each couple runs... I don't know. It's it's tough to hold my interest. Yeah. I mean, you do progress pretty quickly within a fir- yeah. the first, I don't know, five or six runs I was at the first boss. That's so what... it's not okay. It's not that tricky. That's what I was going to ask. So you said you're about 10 hours in. How close do you feel to finishing it? Mm, I don't know. I've stuck away from reading anything about how many areas oh, there okay. are. Yeah. But... Uh, it feels like I'm making good progress. Right. I do not. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I was at you know final boss territory relatively soon. Right. I, I've 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 seen a lot of the hype online. People on Reddit were saying that it's not a super long game, but um, you know, I guess it's all relative. Yeah, I could see this being a game that I would play over and over and over, even after beating it. Nice. Okay. Um, because there is quite a bit of story content. Every time you die, you go back to um, the Hall of Hades, and you. You know, you talk to Hades, obviously, and he's kind of a dick. He's like, ha, you're back again, douchebag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, some of the other uh, gods of the underworld, um, uh, Achilles is kicking around down there because, you know, he he fucked up. Yeah, uh, naturally. Yeah, Hades. Okay. Nice. A surprise nice. and a delight. Yeah. James, you alluded to something that you were not happy with can you talk about that? No, it's still far enough away that it would. This podcast would come out before the embargo. Mm, all right. But I promise it's barely worth talking about. <laughs> I will, however, spend a few minutes talking about Genshin Impact, which I was very pleasantly surprised by. No, oh, all right. Tell me yeah. more. So it's this like free to play game that caught a lot of hype a couple months ago because it looks like a straight up breath of the wild clone um right yeah sort of like they were like oh look at the graphics look at the mechanics and stuff like that it's just they just ripped off breath of the wild which is not strictly speaking true um as somebody who is obsessed with bot dubs um i can tell you affirmatively that it's not exactly rip off they do borrow a few elements from it basically it's a free-to-play anime game which normally is like brain poison like you can't <laughs> install that on your computer without fear of like catching something physically but um but it it, it retains enough like single player exploration move at your own pace do what you fucking want kind of elements to it that like the gameplay loop stays fun without feeling like you're on some sort of guided tour or like on like a train car you know what i mean hmm. like a lot of those ftp games like you're like okay and i do this mission and i do this mission and i do this mission and you're just like cycling through a series of menus going to these little like sandboxes that are like six by six feet and like you know 
fighting for two minutes and then like cycling through menus for 15. Um, it's not like that at all. It's a like expansive open world RPG, open world action RPG where you slowly but surely accumulate a big cast of characters, each with their own unique elemental abilities. You can switch between like immediately on the fly. There's some gacha elements, but I've heard everybody say that you don't really need to fuck with that throughout the entire run of the game if you don't want to. Like you can just play the whole thing for free if you're so inclined and it's fine. And there is like cooking from Breath of the Wild and there is like the big map like Breath of the Wild and you can climb basically anywhere like Breath of the Wild but you can also climb in the rain and it's not a problem, which I appreciate. Oh, thank oh, God. Yeah. That's some real bullshit in Breath of the Wild. Jeez, that's killing me. And, and the, the elemental combat, the way it plays with it, with the different elements, is fucking fascinating. If you're fighting fire enemies, you can make it rain and then they have like the wet status effect. Mm. And then once they have that status effect, you can switch to somebody who uses electricity and shock the holy fuck out of them and and annihilate them or if they're in water you can do the same thing or if they're like water enemies you can freeze them and then you can like just beat the shit of them while they're like standing still or what have you or like wind attacks can like lift people out off the ground and like juggle them and shit and like there's other like elemental combinations I haven't even figured out yet where if they're they are one element and use a different element on them, you can create this like super status effect that like chains damage and it like relies on you switching between party members in order to like make it work. Huh. And the the story doesn't like beat you over the head too hard. There's not too much of it. You can just kind of like explore and fight and do missions. Because it's at launch, they're like super generous with all the different kinds of currency. Cause they want to like, you know, suck you in. But again, genuinely don't have to spend any money. <laughs> Yeah. This looks kind of great, it, right? It's watching gorgeous. the trailer. It's absolutely gorgeous. And like, uh, you, you Google the game, and there's like one of the top one of the top headlines is, it's more than just a Breath of the Wild clone. Well, even if it was a fucking Breath of the Wild clone, is that really a bad thing? No, I got it right. No, it's, man. Like, it's it's fine. <laughs> and honestly, like uh, James, your description, this sounds a bit more my speed. Like I love the fact that you're building a team, and I'm I'm curious how that works. Like, do you know is there yeah. like permadeath? Is there like uh, no? Like, what's what's the team building aspect like? Basically, there's <clears throat> dungeons you can do, and in those, I don't think you can switch between party members, and you can only have four at a time. So you have to make sure you set up your four for when you go in, so you have like the right combination of elements. So you can go in and fuck them up and whatnot. Okay. Um, outside of dungeons, you can just like rotate your party members whenever you want. And if somebody falls in battle, there's items to revive them. And like cooking gives you so many healing items because <laughs> nice. like ingredients are just on the ground. You just wander around and find shit and you can just keep crafting it every time you find a, a like cooking thing or whatever. And the leveling system is really weird because there's character levels that are individual but then there's the adventure levels, which is how much you've earned, like, doing quests and, like, unlocking waypoints and, like, uh, statues and stuff like that. And they're they're separate. Like, they're separate kinds of experience. Because they're separate kinds of experience, you can get characters to individual, like, max level for, like, their progress in the story. It's really weird because I know you can get characters up to, like, level 80 or 100, but the max right now in the beginning is 20. And I think there's going to be a point a little later where you can like unlock like a class upgrade or whatever. So they can get from 20 to 40. Mm, okay. Class. And um, yeah. So there's all these different things you can fiddle with and like the weapons you can, when you get more weapons, you can use them as fodder to upgrade the ones you have and you can upgrade every weapon to like level 10 or level 20 or whatever. Mm, okay. And then when you have clones of the same weapon, you can refine it, which is different from upgrading it. <laughs> so it goes up in red. It's a whole thing. Like there's all sorts of stuff you can do, just with all with all the crap you find on the ground and in treasure chests. And there's and another thing that's kind of like Breath of the Wild is you'll come across a, like six bad guys just like sitting around a campfire, and there's a locked treasure chest, and you beat the shit out of all of them, and the tre treasure chest <laughs> opens. And uh, I don't know it's cool, man. <laughs> I'm gonna download this. Yeah, this, it looks pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, you can get it on PC console or mobile <laughs> yeah 
And I think your saves transfer because you just log in, right? Like, so I can think you can play across platforms. Yeah, it says the Wikipedia claims that you can anyway. Mm-hmm. Huh. Nice. Yeah. God damn. How did this is actually the first I'm hearing about this game? I wrote about it a little while ago because it came up during one of the like big streaming conferences. It's uh... like, look at this fucking Breath of the Wild clone. I was like, oh, I want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> like immediately it was like oh yes please yeah it's like weeb breath of the wild this is right up your alley james <laughs> it looks so good they even have the glider where you can jump from like great heights oh perfect sort of float down that is perfect and you can like unlock different cool looking wings <clears throat> so that like it's not just the same thing every time nice well yes um this week besides playing hades i finally finished ghost of tsushima Ooh, all right fuck oh, yeah damn it was a long time coming. Fuck. The game is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Yeah, man. And part of me, like, deep down in my soul, like, if I was going to rate this game based on how much I enjoyed it, purely subjective reasoning, I would score it incredibly highly. Yeah. But uh, objectively, from a review standpoint, you absolutely hit the nail on the head, James. It's a, it's a <laughs> 9 out of 10 game. Yeah, but uh, pretty, pretty great. Not perfect, <laughs> but my god, just so unbelievably gorgeous and incredibly. The combat still holds up thirty or forty hours into the game. Oh, yeah. and I really enjoyed the story. I know a lot of what? people thought it was pretty thin, or they didn't identify with uh, uh, Jin's journey. But oh man, man. I fucking loved it. He's such a great protagonist, and I love the fact that he's, like, kind of rough-looking, and just, like, he just, like, because, you know, like a, like, a game set in Japan, or, like, Japanese dude is gonna be, like, just this, just this smoking hot guy. He's just, like, he just looks like a dude, like, just a dude, you know, who's, like, seen a few battles, mm -hmm. who's, like, you know, seen some weather, you know? He's just, just a dude, but he has such a, like, fascinating fucking journey, and the way the, like, the motion capture gets his like expressions and like lines up with the voice acting like ah oh, so good yeah people I a lot of western critics i was reading um had a problem with the motion capture or not thinking it was that good but like you got to realize this is a this is a cultural thing right it's it's based on ancient japanese culture where you know the stoic, strong, silent type was what was preferred, and that's what was expected out of somebody like Lord Sakai. So, having there him not make that many expressions is totally expected. Stillness. stillness. There was a Very scene. Important. There was a scene towards the beginning, one of the flashbacks where like Jin's dad has like just died, or like the funeral's happening, and him and his uncle are facing each other, and they have this like wordless exchange where mm -hmm. you just see that the camera kind of pans between him and his uncle and you, you you and they're like and there's just this one little flash where his uncle kind of like looks at him and then down and kind of away for a second and you see his like mouth like kind of twitch a little bit and you're just like and in that one moment you're like holy fuck you just capture so much of like the inner conflict and the like the like the layers of toxic masculinity that are like, you know, I, I I understand that you're suffering badly and I want to do more to comfort you, but I can't. And the fact that you're taking this as well as you are and I'm taking this as well as I am is like big man points for the fucking two of us. And like, and this is like, and that little motion, that little movement with his face and with his, the, the sort of like flexing of his hands as they're like clasped together in front of him is like basically all he can fucking do. And it's just so, so, so good. So good. Yeah. 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 Uh, Retton. I Sorry, was ahead, saying, Rhett. Apollo and I were talking before we started. And I was saying that, uh, like, before this game came out, I was I was comparing it with The Last of Us. And that I was saying that uh, I didn't really think Ghost of Tsushima would hold up compared to The Last of Us in, like, the storytelling and the writing and how The Last of Us really felt like you were watching a hollywood blockbuster but when everything was said and done with ghost of tsushima i felt like it held up every bit as well as as the last of us did i felt like i was watching a, a 
you know, a Quentin Tarantino movie or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, it's <laughs> the writing, the pacing, man, it blew me away. It blew me away. I, I really didn't think that I was going to be as invested uh, into the story as I was, but it quickly became one of the most interesting parts of the game, you know? I, I love the gameplay, don't get me wrong. I love taking on 10 guys at once and, and coming out unscathed. But, uh, man, like I, I'm going to remember this story for a long time. Last of Us 2, eh, not so much. Yeah, I mean, I think they both tell really personal stories, but in very different ways. Very different ways, you for know, sure. For sure. <clears throat> the Last hey. of Us is what it is, but uh, in this game it uses the broad scale, that broad scope of the Mongolian invasion to tell Jin's story in, in very much the same way you might see in a, a Batman story yeah. where Jin has to become the, the hero that is needed, not the hero that he wanted to be. Yeah. And that really resonated with me. And by the time, you know, the final decision rolls around, man, oh. that, that cut oh. me up. I yeah, had to it's... put the controller down and, and walk away for five minutes before doing the thing that I knew I had to do. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not going to spoil it's... it, but uh... it's fucking heartbreaking and it's dark and it's good. <laughs> I made that decision immediately. Like I immediately knew what the right thing to do was. And I felt really bad about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. like I know what both parties want and what they'll feel better about afterwards. And that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and then once you make the decision, the, the direction and the cinematography, the way that scene plays out is it's absolutely beautiful. And there's no other way to put it. Like if anyone can watch, one of that the specifically that scene and try to tell me the video games aren't art get the fuck out of town because yeah. they it's, are it's, it's yeah. perfection perfection in gaming um like <laughs> you want to talk about like uh you know cinema and gaming coming together i don't know if if i've ever seen it more so than that specific moment it just felt like so incredibly cinematic so beautifully done it felt it just felt like I was watching something out of Hollywood, you know? Sidebar, that battle that precedes that moment, I struggled with that. And I want to know, did you? how did you guys fare in that fight? Like, how did you do? You mean mechanically uh, died, or emotionally? Died, mechanically, mechanically. I, I found that a fairly difficult fight. Died a couple times. Died a couple times, but I don't remember struggling too much. Um... I didn't I felt I thought maybe it was a bit tougher than some of the other duels. I thought that uh the fight with fucking Khan was the toughest one. Really? Oh, interesting. He he fucked me up a few times, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I, that had I, I some couldn't... real bullshit baked into it though. That right? that fight had some real video yeah, game so in there. Interesting. I was like I was fucking Cause... mad at that fight. For Get a the little... fuck out of here with your low sweep. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> for me it's that's yeah. so interesting because for me the duels like with like the sword versus sword duels those are the really hard ones for me and any battle where i have the full range of my capabilities not a fucking chance i don't care who it is but when yeah. it's just like oh none of your powers matter and it's just you being able to sword fight really well i'm like fuck right man well, like the fucking uh the duels like the the timing based ones uh, but but like the, like that last fight where it's just like a sword duel you don't have any of your fucking skills really like not right. most of your powers are, are blocked to you and you just like and and like your stance doesn't really matter it's just like what are your reflexes like how fast are you how you know totally how quickly can you dodge and parry and move and all that like those are the tough fights for me the ones where i have like all of my stances and all of my supplies no fucking oh, chance oh yeah the, the the con fight, I fucking annihilated that dude. <laughs> really? What? what I, what I swept that on? motherfucker. Interesting. I just, yeah, like, it's, I, I find that fascinating that we, we found different things more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I, myself, I rolled through a lot of the game leaning really heavily on the sword fighting, though. I didn't mm. find myself using the ghost weapons that much. So, so when, like, it, when it came to the duels, I felt like I had the timing pretty much nailed on the parries and the dodging um, to get away from, from dudes. 
Oh yes, as soon as they gave me bombs, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, like, were you guys doing standoffs more so than going in stealth? Yeah, I didn't do too much stealth. I just didn't. I just don't find it as fun. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'd rather just like, like, go in screaming and just like, for sure, start throwing oh, yeah. bombs and arrows and shit and just. No, be, like, I was about to say, man, when you got ten guys looking at you, they're all attacking you, and you come out without a scratch on you. It is so satisfying. It's so fucking fun. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. The, the one gameplay moment for me, or a thing that I would put forward as best moment of the year, is. Uh, when you're retaking Yarakawa partway through the game and it's the first time you, you bust out the ghost stance. Oh God. Holy fuck. That <laughs> moment. I was just yeah. whooping like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was man. so amazing. So good. <laughs> totally. Because I'm, I'm playing through the game and I'm like, this is great and all, but where are the decapitations? Where? Well, like, why am I not chopping any of these guys up? Sure enough. Sure enough, it's coming. Yep. Don't worry. The slaughter button, it's gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The like the war crime button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the complete holy dishonor fuck. button. Yeah. Yeah. Holy fuck. <laughs> Man, I loved it, and I'm still gonna go back and mop everything up to make sure I get the platinum on this one. Um, Fucking yeah, right. It's um, just so it. much fun. Oh yeah, there's lots to do, uh, and. Next week, boys, multiplayer. Are we going to be getting into it? Oh, I'll play. Yeah. I'll play for sure. 100%. We should record some of that. That'd be fun. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. I'm down. And outside of that, I I gave in to my primal urges and went back mm-hmm. and played some more Fallout 4. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yep. How was okay. that? Sure. You know. Upon revisiting it, I I didn't love this game when it came out because it wasn't what I expected, which obviously that's a fatal flaw anytime you're looking at uh, a, a game or a movie or anything like that. But on revisiting it, it's pretty fun, hmm. especially with a couple of mods to make things not quite so shitty in the speech system and... Oh yeah. Make the uh the the town building a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, like do you have do you have your speech system set up to actually tell you what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the answers are are yes, yes, no and <laughs> m- maybe later. So Yeah. <laughs> Christ. So that that is what it is, but from a a gameplay perspective, that game's so far ahead of the the stuff Bethesda had done before mechanically speaking the gunplay and and physically speaking it's it's way better than skyrim or fallout 3 or any of those other games yeah Um, yeah i think i might keep dabbling in it because i i modded the shit out of this thing oh nice that's always the way to go if you can you know get get some uh get some get some enhancements happening (laughs) Yeah, yeah i threw down like 60 mods Knowing there was nice. no way in hell this game would ever boot with that many mods installed, and it just worked. Nice. So, and like, you know, and... you Go got ahead. that big Miami release coming out pretty soon. You know about that? Yeah, that um, that like community yeah, built. Yeah, it's like Fallout yeah. Miami. Yeah. yeah, it's it's looking pretty impressive, I must say. Um, it, yeah, man the trailer that they've got up on YouTube right now, it looks like a new fallout game. I haven't so. watched the, I haven't watched the latest one. Yeah. You should check that out. But yeah, like I got, um, there's a mod that turns the, the base building basically into Sim city. Oh wow. Really? Yeah. And crazy. Let's the settlers that you bring into town, build the city on their own. Ah, nice. So nice. there's a lot of quality of life things that people have done. But from a graphical perspective, you can make this thing look super next gen. Oh yeah. And because the game itself is pretty old, even on a, a relatively decent machine, you can install a lot of mods and it it still runs with sixty frames. Nice. Yeah. So if, if anybody's been sleeping on Fallout 4 for the last 
five years because they thought it sucked, uh, go give it a try. Just stay away from the main story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> that's that's an that's an unfortunately common part of Bethesda games. The open world ones are like, you don't really need to fuck with the main narrative. You can just kind of no. do your own thing. Yeah, lean yeah. into the factions. Go check out the Brotherhood of Steel and the the uh, the railway, rail railroad railroad. Hey, whatever uh, the rail people are called. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The underground. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just just don't go find your son. He'll be no. fine. I promise. No, be sure. Yeah. Be sure to find the Brotherhood of Steel, go up into the ship, and kill the captain and get his coat. It's like the best coat in the game. <laughs> yeah, man. There, that one mission, I think it's for the railroad where you uh, sneak into the Pridwin and plant bombs. Yeah. That's a great mission. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Anybody else play anything? Anything else, uh, anyway? Um, I, was... I, had a, I had a really rough weekend, and then I used... Animal Crossing's Halloween update to sort of like Ooh. smooth out those edges because they, they give you a bunch of like spooky pumpkin shit to like guss up your like your homestead and make it look really spooky and they unlocked a whole bunch more like uh skin and face and like makeup stuff so you can be like fully white or green or blue or purple skin hmm. tones and then like change your eyes to like bright red so you can make these crazy little gothed up lunatics if you want, or like, yeah, yeah. I spend an unbelievable amount of mu- of bells on clothes in Animal Crossing because <laughs> I like very quickly paid off all the house debts. So I was like, well, what am I gonna buy? I'm like, every outfit sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. You get that little magic wand where you can like change between eight different outfits at the drop of a hat, which I really appreciate. Because you know you want to you want to be wearing the right clothes for when you're digging for clams in the sand, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got to have your hungover after a three day bender outfit, which you can absolutely assemble in Animal Crossing using their items. Definitely, definitely. I always <laughs> make sure I'm properly dressed when I dig clam. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> As a softball, you knocked it out of the park, Red. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> it was right there, man, down the pipe. I'm sorry. <laughs> down the pipe, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> down the barrel. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, with that out of the way, maybe we should move on to the news. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, we talked for a long time about video games. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we should, uh, we should talk about some news for a hot minute. <laughs> the good news is there's not, like, that much going on. It's not like last week where we talked about the news for an hour and a half and I had to cut it down, freaking make it fit into a typical podcast length. Mm. But anyways, yeah. uh, Cyberpunk 2077 has gone gold. It's going to come out. It's about fucking time. That that's great news, man. Yeah. That's that's super great news. I know they had a, a lot of crunching. They had to do a lot of crunching to get to that point. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know how their employees feel about that. They're like they haven't gotten their story. I don't know if you will for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a Polish studio, and I don't really know what the work culture is like over there. Like if they like I don't know if they give a shit about crunch. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's a good point. Like. <laughs> Like, I know American Studios, we don't like that shit. And that's fair. I don't think anybody should. I think I think nobody should fucking work 70, 100-hour weeks. I think Let's... I think if you think that's a good idea, you've been tricked. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, like... If you want to, go for it. Yeah, but you, you shouldn't know. want to. No, absolutely. Uh, 100% no. I'm with you on that. You shouldn't they've... want to. But if you want to, go they've... for it. They fucked up your brain a little bit by making you want that. Why? <laughs> but like, one hundred percent. Yeah, but like, but maybe they do, and maybe they have, and maybe that has happened, and maybe they're like, oh, well, it's fine, just a hundred hour weeks, we don't give a shit, and like, maybe that's the case. Yeah, okay. But but yeah, it is good that we're not getting it delayed anymore because so many games are getting pushed back. So many things, games, movies, TV shows. It's, it's 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 the wild west out there, you know. Yeah, that James Bond you, you, movie's never coming out. Oh yeah, with Dune. With... Dune isn't happening until next fall, so the rumors say. Yep. Mm. Um. Uh. Wonder Woman's getting pushed back forever and ever and ever. 
Uh, everything big is just, if there's a huge move you've been hearing about, it's been delayed sometimes twice, sometimes thrice. I want to jump back for a hot second and touch on that crunch thing. I was watching the Sopranos not that long ago, watching through that whole thing again. And That's... something one of the uh, the Russian characters said was very interesting to me. She was talking to Tony Soprano and she said, you Americans are the only people in the world who expect to be happy and still you're unhappy. Mm. <laughs> and I immediately thought of video game crunch. Like, is that the case? Are we just that coddled in our lives that we just expect to be happy and expect everything to go perfectly? And then when it doesn't, we're unhappy. Is that the case everywhere else or elsewhere in the world? People are happy with less. And so therefore, if there's a minor inconvenience, it's not that big of a deal. Well, undoubtedly, that is true. I think it's a little different with um, being part of an entertainment industry because with other jobs and other careers, it's just like you do this because it must be done, because you have a family to support, because you want to build a life for yourself. But like something like TV or movies or video games, you like, this is a job you dream about. This is a job you like look up to. You know what I mean? Like this is a job that like, this is a job you create expectations for before you get it. No matter how much other people try to tell you, no, 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 tamper those expectations lower the bar go in reasonably right but like and i feel like that's pro that's got to be the case like everywhere you know like anybody any kid around the world who's like i want to make video games when i grow up has got like an idealistic streak in him right that like nobody sure. else has managed to stamp out mm. um so while i do definitely think that the expectation that idea that like you guys just think you you deserve to be happy and you're so shocked when you're not definitely definitely applies most of the time. I'm not sure if it applies to video games. I would love to talk to some of the people from CD Projekt Red and and get their feelings on this whole situation because yeah, you know, when they came out not that long ago and said, "Yeah, we've been we've been crunching for a bit to get this thing done." I wonder how the actual people on the ground floor feel about it. There's, yeah, there's definitely that's... a lot of outrage here, but do they care or are they just thrilled that they've built this incredible well, world and that's the, their legacy. That's the interesting thing is that like even over here you get people who are so in the culture like in the work culture that they they're fine with it right they're like 100 hour weeks fine by me whatever man pedal the metal you know what I mean like there's people like that yeah well, here I mean, too especially, and I, I, especially if you have been working on this fucking game for 7 years is it 8 years mm. I'm sure at this point, the majority of people just want to get this fucking thing done. You know, they want to grind. They want to fucking get through this. Uh, how could you not want to move on to a new project at this point? Or at least like take I, a fucking vacation. I, um, <laughs> I'm definitely of the mindset where I would be susceptible to the, like, the siren song of crunch. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the sort of person yeah. who would just, like, straight up, like, leap in. Totally, both man. feet right yeah, be like absolutely. yeah no let's do it let's well, work like crazy oh, yeah. and fucking I'll fucking sleep there fuck wreck it. my go. mental health you oh, know yeah. what i mean like <laughs> totally totally relationship girlfriend <laughs> left me fuck it let's go <laughs> yeah like i'm i'm definitely the, the the kind of person who would fall for that shit yeah. but like <laughs> so I, I get it when it happens yeah. totally yeah <gasps> totally <laughs> but i have no doubt about it that uh, every one of these people's work is going to be greatly appreciated come launch day, I'm sure. I'm sure people are going to fucking love this game. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it feels. It, it looks like it feels pretty good. Yeah, like the gunplay, just walking around, reloading, uh, f pulling the trigger, everything. Like, oh man, the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay looks like it's a lot of fun. Yeah, never mind I... the, the whole meta game of Night City. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you'll have to wait if you want to play a uh, next-gen native version of one of this game. Because it's not coming out on PS5 and Xbox Series X right away. Oh, that's good to know. Because I was like, you know what? At this point, I might as well just wait to play it on the PS5. So, But yeah. I was disappointed because you know, I, I thought that it was coming out at launch, basically. 
Um, so no, it's good to know that I'll have some time to get the console first. They have said though that the uh, the both current gen versions will upgrade to the next gen versions once right. The, and if know, the remaster is available, and if it's more expensive, why not buy the current gen version? I, like I, I see that with a lot of these games, you know, all the sports games and all all the shit that they say that you're gonna get the free upgrade on. Uh, why would you not just buy it for current gen? Or ten dollars. Well, you got to be careful there because some of them do have an upgrade fee. Oh, okay. okay. Like, uh, Call of Duty so, is one of those that's that's sixty current gen and seventy next gen. Right. Here's here's my question. All these companies who are coming in hot and heavy talking about, oh, there's going to be a PS5 version. It's going to be so much better. How much better is it going to be? Because well, like like. I'm not I'm not trying to be like you know no fun Francis or anything here. I just want to know like what the tangible differences are going to be between the versions. The, the big like, thing for me is that I expect the load times to be way better. Yeah, like right? that's that that's a fair that's a fair assessment. Like if it's just like the load times will be better, the like the I guess like but like that's kind of the only thing I can think of so far because the file sizes aren't getting any smaller. Like nobody's really taking advantage of the inherent power of these machines yet because they literally don't know how to right. and that's fine right. but it just it's just like one less thing that they can tout like they can lift up and be like this is the superior version it's like that's a good graphically they're not huge leaps yeah that's a good right? like, that's a good point though that's probably why all these developers are so eager to jump at a free next gen upgrade because it's really not a better version of the game it's just going to load quicker well, like if, if somebody wants to jump in after the fact and say hey these are the things that's going to be better i'm like totally please enlighten me yeah. i will i will eat that humble pie like right fucking now but like yeah. so far i can't see a lot of tangible differences i think right. a game like cyberpunk you're gonna see a little bit of uh like physical quality on models and surfaces and things like that but S- I think where the current gen versions are really going to fall down is on performance. I bet Cyberpunk, I expect to barely like run shit. on PS4. Yeah. 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 Like full like full stop. I expect Cyberpunk to barely barely run on PS4 and the basic Xbox 1. Like that it'll be like, "Oh, there's a lot of like popping and like oh, yeah. lag and stuff like of course there's going to be. This game is a fucking beast." <laughs> but I think that's where you'll see it on a lot of the cross-gen stuff. It'll be things that are purpose built for these next gen machines, knowing the specs of SSDs and the specs of processors. Yeah, that you'll, and you'll, you'll really you'll... start to see the difference like next year. You know, things totally. like that when that uh, the new God of War comes out, I bet that's gonna look, you know, Fucking it's gonna amazing. it's gonna blow people away. Yeah, blow their tits clean off. They will. Heck Another yeah, thing man. I would be curious to see though with the PS5 version of Cyberpunk is how. And if they're going to utilize uh, like the control, the new controller with the triggers and how they're supposed to have like that, like uh, sort of like resistant feedback on the triggers, you know, for yep. different sorts of things. Like I, I want to see how that works for like pulling a trigger or pulling a bow or I want to see what that feels like. So I, I hope that they make use of that in the in the PS5 version. Oh, I'm sure if they, they really made, made use of that. It'd be impossible to properly fire a gun at the speed people want. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, right. I hope They'd be like, fucking... "Why is this so hard?" Watch, <laughs> watch <laughs> some some guns will just kick like a fucking mule. Your fucking controller will kick back and hit you in the face if you're not careful. I God, hope. that'd be so good. <laughs> just players with like black eyes and shit because their controller like <laughs> knocked them in the heads. <laughs> I want to see some PS5 controllers modded with these giant motors inside of them. They're like hooked up to a car battery next to you. You know, totally. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Just masochistic nonsense. Yeah, man. Uh, in other news, there are Xbox Series X preview units out in the wild, mm. out in journalist hands. And at well, one of them is in Cog Connected's hands, and Trevor has it. Wow. He's been playing the Xbox Series X. Wow. That's that indeed. fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> not allowed to talk about just about anything. 
uh, no. except how backwards compatible games run. And the answer to that is they run good. <laughs> they run real good. <laughs> brilliant. Fucking yeah, brilliant. Um, I had a lot of doubts as to how backwards compatible games would run on uh, the Series X. Yeah, I keep well, I keep I, talking to him and asking him to put in, you know, put some some time into games that didn't run that good on current gen. Sure. Final Fantasy 15, play that, play that. I want to see if it will it run stably. Mm. So things like that. Yep. And it seems like they do. Just brute force. Oh, okay. Yeah, cuz Jesus Christ, that thing's like the specs that I've seen is just like playing a PS4 game on a PS5 or an Xbox One game on a Series X is like sandblasting a soup cracker. It's just like, yeah, no, it's going to be <laughs> fine, man. <laughs> Did not stand a chance. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll have more information or more uh, impressions and stuff on the Series X as time goes along, as embargoes and whatnot lift. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, it seems like that, that quick resume feature is pretty goddamn cool. And uh, it runs Xbox One and Xbox 360 games like nobody's business. Sick. Ooh, can't wait to play Left 4 Dead 1 <laughs> on my Series X. Uh, on, the, on the other side of the console war, there's finally some actual PS5 hands-on stuff going on through the Japanese media. Which is not surprising since, you know, Sony, Japanese company. Yep. You know? Yeah, no, I, I could see that. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, people played some uh, Astro's Playroom, I think, and Godfall, I want to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the PS5 I... is very quiet. Ooh, well, I mean, after the fucking jet engine fiasco that was the PS4 Pro. Yep. Uh, I would hope that this thing runs. It doesn't need to be whisper quiet, but come on. Yeah. The translated quotes I saw said things like, well, you could kind of tell it was on. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. Well, that's great because uh, <laughs> you can tell nothing but that it's on when a PS4 Pro is running. <laughs> oh my god, man! When I'm playing fucking anything that's been released in the past year or two, it's it's a fucking jet engine. It's insane how loud the uh, PS4 is. Yeah. Open up the menu in God of War. Oh, I god. have never heard it get that loud. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even the PS4s loud but i guess it's not anywhere near as bad as the pro like i've i've heard horror stories like uh alex thomas is, talks about how like he can't even like hear himself think over the sound of that fucking machine yeah yeah it's oh true. it's like blowing children over in the street and old ladies are falling down they need an extra cane because they can't withstand the force of this thing i had a couple friends over uh obviously before covid and we were playing, I don't know, some fucking game, and the, my PS4 started, the, the fans started to kick up, and, uh, like, my friend started making fun of me. It was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there looking like a fucking idiot. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the PS5 for that. No doubt about it. <laughs> I wonder what poor sucker's going to get my PS4 when I sell it. I'm sure they'll be perfectly pleased. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, the last thing I wanted to bring up, it's not a news story, but we're rapidly approaching the release of these consoles, and we don't know shit about them. What features do these consoles have, and why aren't these companies talking about it? Is there a specific feature, or like set of features, or like a subset that you're like expecting to hear about that you haven't yet? Like, Well, I fully expected to see the PS5's UI by this point mm. and things like what are the options when you share stuff do these machines capture in 4k what's the streaming cap capability like mm. how do they work with twitch how do they work with youtube what are the social options how can can you talk between the ps5 and the ps4 can you talk between the series x and the xbox one what are parties like you know Things like that are, are usually well out into the open by this point. Yeah, and there's no reason to be cagey about it. Like, it's not like they're going to last 
11th hour just go in and change this shit around like that's not happening you know like well, i mean this, I, this, uh, the features are the features so tell us what the features are yeah like, i'm sure it's all gonna be more of the same I'm sure it's all gonna essentially be what the ps4 and the xbox one is doing well no because this is I, I'm, I was thinking about this and this is actually kind of important to me because as a person who makes videos for the site and captures footage like if you could just do that fucking thing you know through the console yeah that'd be nice right yep that would be cool. I mean, I, do, I, do, I, I have my most sincere doubts that that will ever be the case. I mean, technically, you can do that now. Yeah, but it's, like, it's not, it's not ideal. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's not ideal. Yeah, if, if there was an like, actual, they, they do yeah. this thing where it's like, oh, you're in a cutscene. We're not allowed to record these. I'm like, fuck you. Yes, you are. Right, get out of here. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't lay that shit on me. All right. <laughs> We yeah. all, I'm I'm doing it. It's happening. It's done. It's out. It's out there. It's public. Everybody can see it. Don't just relax, right. okay? It's more passable on the PS4 than it is on the Xbox One right now, but you know, on the PS4 and even on the PS4 Pro, the the level of quality, even if it is 1080 on the Pro, the bit rate on it is tremendously low. It's nowhere near anything you'd see on even the most basic Elgato. So mm. it's. It's an area that I expect they will improve. I wouldn't be surprised to see 4K capture. If they do that, then great. You're going to save me $400 <laughs> buying a new capture yeah. card. <laughs> if not, then I guess I'm buying a capture card. But like, yeah. Yeah. It'd be awesome if you could do that for me. I think that would be hilarious, though, to put up a bunch of PS5 and Xbox Series X videos and have them 480p. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We captured this with the phone we dug out of the bottom of our closet. <laughs> These little Off postage screen. stamps. <laughs> yeah. Off screen LG chocolate footage. Two, circa <laughs> 2004. Fuck. Oh, you can't watch this video. Unfortunately, you're going to need to install Real Player first. Oh, nice. <laughs> Fucking Bonzi buddy. Tell you what, I'll. I'll 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 get a camcorder from somebody and then I'll rip the okay. VHS footage. Nice, 1987. <laughs> nice. <laughs> My favorite year. Yeah. <laughs> People will be like, "Why does it look so bad? Is the connection <laughs> wrong?" I'm like, "Nah, man." No, no, no. I did. This looks as good as it as it can. Yeah. <laughs> We're reaching the limits of the format here. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My capture card is a Magnavox. <laughs> 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 uh, uh yeah in all seriousness though I, I feel like at this point sony is just waiting for microsoft to get tired waiting for them to stop releasing things into the media stop with the marketing blitz for a hot second so that they can be like okay and here's our stuff right. as well please enjoy yeah that'd be great yeah I, that's I gotta like... be happening in the next couple of weeks here I mean, of course, there needs to be marketing done and everything like that, but I feel like Sony, maybe they feel like, and I also feel like they're at the point where, I mean, people know what they're going to get, you know? If uh, if they don't market the PS5 maybe as heavily as they did, say, the PS3 or PS4, I don't think it's really going to affect sales all that much. I think they're going to do just fine. I think they'll do the Sony thing that they've always done, which is when they market, it's these big broad strokes campaigns, like yeah. the new, uh, you know, boat sailing commercial that they've got tells you absolutely nothing about anything. Right. But it's decided to win the hearts and minds. And that's kind of what, what Sony has always done is here's our thing. It's good. Buy it. Okay. Good. Buy. Microsoft is way more mechanical about it, but buy this thing because it's got 12 teraflops. Right, exactly, exactly. You know? Sony does. It, Sony has yeah, always one... felt like they're a little bit more hip, I guess you could say. Yeah, they're into the soul of the thing and less the, the tech. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't give a shit about the teraflops. It's just, sorry. No, it's, I, not, I, I, it's, not, it's not important to me. Exactly. Yeah, just flop the box into my media center so I can play the games. Yeah. It's the only flop I care about. Truly. We don't care about the flops. 
really not really not sure the PS5 is going to fit in my media center now that we're talking about such things. Oh, no. Kind of feel like it's, uh, I don't know where the fuck it's going to go. <laughs> Front and center, man. Front and center, Show it yeah. off. Yeah, just on the floor. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's great. Like, I'll, I'll put it, it'll be visible, of course, because it fucking has to be based on the size. I just mean there's physically no place I can put it with my current furniture. Are you going to be standing it up or laying it on its no, side? No, I absolutely cannot do that. No? All of the top of the shelves real estate is taken up by two different flat screens, all right? There's no fucking room for 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 standing systems right, right now. right, right. So and boring. we live in a metropolitan city here, you know. the The ceiling is only so high; you can't stand that thing on its end. That's true. I was thinking I was gonna have to move when I get mine, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Got to go out of town. Yeah, get to the burbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't didn't really want to, but um, higher ceilings and a bit more affordable. Yeah, I think if I, I think I'm I'm pretty far out there. I think if if I do a little shoving. I can probably, probably fit it standing up in my living room. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. That's going to be a great thread when these things start coming out. Is this? Look at where I had to put this thing because, Christ, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's actually going to be the size of, like, <laughs> well, maybe not that big, but you remember those, like, Shaw cable boxes? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be the size of one of those things, which is, like, two bathroom scales taped together. I think it's going to be big enough where if I have to unplug or plug anything back in, it's going to be fucking impossible <laughs> because it's going to just barely fit in the media center. Yeah. It's like, can you adjust that cable? I cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is what it is forever. <laughs> um, you want to talk about features? What kind of power brick, if there is going to be any, are going to be coming with these systems? I'm sure the PlayStation's just going to have a fucking basic plug but you think the series x is gonna stick with the fucking fat power brick hmm people I don't feel like, like it's just got a regular that. like two-prong plug on the back good. of it good it's time remember the 360 the the power brick for the 360 oh my god that thing yeah. was a fucking joke it was a cinder block yeah it literally a cinder block it was 12 pounds and i'm pretty sure that thing was the cause of all those red ring issues yeah. yeah, maybe. Completely unfounded, <laughs> but, uh, you know. From from what I've read, the original 360s just got so hot and were so poorly managed thermally that they literally just melted inside. The solder melted and they fucked up. For sure. Um, Which is insanely hot. Insanely hot. It's not hot. safe. Yeah, if you've ever wrapped a th- an Xbox 360 in a towel to try and fix... The Red Ring of Death problem, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know what that system was all about. Yeah, man, I've wrapped a 360 in a towel. I've I've used a PlayStation One upside down. <laughs> you know, I've I've been around the block. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you do you remember that that whole debacle, James? Upside down? No, I don't. Okay, so the early PlayStation Ones had a problem with the disc spindle that the the little uh you know retaining dots that you click the disc over were oh, yeah. wrong they were too tight or they were too loose or something so the disc Jesus. would not recognize properly and the solution to that was to turn the PlayStation upside down because it would put the proper pressure on the ring and it would allow the disc to read no fucking way so and it That's worked fine n- once you turned it upside down sure <laughs> jesus oh, yeah. christ fucking bizarre man Oh my god. Anyways, we should probably get out of here. This is a long podcast, guys. Holy fuck, yeah. The big the 90 minute special, man. We're we're fucking coming in hot. The engines are on fire. The landing gear is dead. How are we going to do this? We had a lot of great games to talk about. You you, you we, can't fight it. Yes. You can't fight it. I love yeah, spending we, uh, the time we... with you fellas. I don't know about y'all, but I love being here. I love spending the time with you guys. It hasn't. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's it's felt like ninety seconds to me. Well, I appreciate it. It that. takes me a while to drink uh, <laughs> three ounces of scotch, so it's felt like it felt it's felt like some time has passed. Okay, uh, Full I'll disclosure. accept that too. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, if you've come this far, thank you very much, listener, viewer, 
for taking this journey with us. We truly appreciate it. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. And you know, I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about the week of October 19th. I think we're going to have some news to talk about. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that is yeah. not inside information in any way, shape, or form. I know nothing. But I got a good feeling. It's a good hunch. And I, uh, I think you're right. I think it's going to be good. Good times. Yeah, well, in the know, meantime, I don't, I don't know what the fuck these two are talking about. So I'm in the dark just as much as y'all. Wow. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, what are your feelings about October 19th? Is it going to be a good week? Me? Uh, look at the calendar. It's just another week. It's a Monday. What the fuck happens on October 19th? Well, it'll be our, our second last episode before two new consoles come out. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. So I guess what we're saying is it fucking better be a good week, all right? <laughs> fair enough, fair Listen, enough. Listen, yeah. Sony, yeah. Microsoft, <laughs> yeah. give us the goods. Totally. We want another 90-minute podcast next time or else. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hostage situation, the whole thing. This is shotgun ski masks. It's all, it's very contrived. Listen, you'll you be fine. I, I mean, my or else situation was or else the podcast will be shorter, but. Yeah, ski or masks, that. Sure. If okay. you want to fucking downplay the drama, then yes, we could just have a shorter <laughs> podcast. I'll put the shotguns away. What do you say? <laughs> Keep them handy. Keep them handy yeah, just Okay, in case. all right. Arms reach. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye.